Well, you know, uh, I think it was 2012. Two years ago, three years ago, I went to, uh, I was taken by my uh, people who does uh, all our charities and uh, various uh, health programs. And uh, I, I visited uh, the Sigambot Youth uh, Centre. And I spent, uh, well, I plan to spend because I'm quite busy, I was planning to spend about maybe one hour, you know. And uh, I ended up, I think I did stay maybe three hours. So I was quite impressed with what I saw. I had lunch with uh, the youth, spent time with them, spoke to them. And I came away quite impressed with the program. Traditionally, we had community centers, and we wanted to, do, to have community centers uh, in Malaysia. So we, we came up with a project called Project 100. Project 100 is to establish 100 community centers throughout the rural and semi-urban um, underserved communities in Malaysia, uh, all over the country, nationwide. We wanted to serve every and any community, right from the Orang Asli, the indigenous communities, to the island communities, to the coastal communities, to the central, any communities, right from, from semi-urban to extreme rural. And the, the, the whole idea of Project 100 is to provide educational services to communities. And the first thing was to teach English um, and eventually IT. What, what we did was we partnered with, with Tan Sri Vincent Tan and his Better Malaysia Foundation to be able to, to get the support and the funding to, to implement because this is a great huge initiative it has never been done uh, anywhere else that we are aware of before and in such a short time to establish from we had five committee centers to now 100 was a great great task and the first thing we do is we develop a model where we wanted to teach housewives besides the youth and children so housewives in the morning we realized our teachers would live in the communities, they would be based there because that's the best way to do it. We can't do this coming and going every day. We live there. The first thing is we teach housewives in the morning. The second thing is we teach children who finish school earlier, they come. Later afternoon, youths. And then at night, we teach working adults. This way, we could teach everyone in that community English and life skills. <laughs> came from a poor family who couldn't afford private uh, education. So I learned English in a government-sponsored school. And, uh, and I feel English is very, very important. So that's why I decided to uh, sort of support uh, this organization. And as I said earlier, I became successful and wealthy. And I believe that the English language helped me a lot.
I like. Seoul given me so much of opportunity. Then what the most I like is to educate the children and educate the youth. Yeah, because nobody has to do this for them. Yeah, so for me because Seoul have educated me and Seoul have given me a lot of opportunities for me to develop myself. So this time for me to share whatever I have learned from Seoul. Yeah. Without the partnership of and, and the vision actually of Tantri Vincent Tan. So Tantri Vincent Tan is 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 is, a, is 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 so passionate about English because he truly believes he and this is not this is not uh, for media or this he, he truly believes that English has transformed his life, has given him one of the most fundamental tools for his business. Of course there are many other characteristics, but one of the core or the core tool was English to be able to com uh, communicate internationally. And he's not just passionate, he's actually putting his money where his mouth is. So he's investing these millions to help as many underserved communities, as many people in the communities to be able to truly master the language, which will hopefully give them a much better chance at employability. It will give them a much better chance at having a better life. And, and only through his partnership were we able to do this. I like the the vision of souls, the the way they want to develop people, the way, the way they want to develop communities, not just in English language, but also in motivation and yeah, I don't, don't really have words for it. It's I have this deep feeling of love for souls. And all the things they do. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Well, when I was there, I was very impressed uh, with the English language. Uh, I spoke to many of them and, l and found out that they only learn English like four or five months, some six months ago, and they could speak. So I was very impressed with that. And I thought uh, this would be a good program to support uh, in learning English. And of course, they have other, they teach uh, and other, other skills. Right? But to me, English was the most, was the thing that really attracted me to support this uh, organization. Because I'm a firm believer in the, you know, in the, uh, the English language. I believe that English language is uh, uh, it's an important language that everyone should know and uh, it is an uh, economic language. So what we did was we realized that we had a good program and we had very good funding and now we could be able to provide this opportunity to the world and tell anyone in the world if you're interested in community development, grassroots impact and education, please come and join us. So we started putting it on the internet, we started putting it uh, on, on Facebook, on the website and step by step we started getting applications on Idealist, you know, go abroad. We put it as as many places as we could think of, and that's when we started getting people. 
and we had so many amazing people who, who joined us, who came on board and started the program. You know, and we have learned so many things along the way, you know, both good and bad, what to do, what not to do, because there is no model to copy. We had to, to start from scratch. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes, but we also learned so much. And I think, you know, in, in a year, a year and a half, we've made amazing, amazing development where we've grown to such enormous numbers. system also I admire because it uh, comes from all ages, the primary schools, secondary, the adults, the working people and also the uh, the ones that are uh, the higher students that are waiting for their results to go to university, to go for interviews, now they have confidence uh, because and then they are more fluent in this English, in, in speaking in English. And I need a lot more of your people to come. We want to be exposed, but we cannot afford to send a lot of our people overseas. It's so expensive. Yeah. But when I saw this uh, woman, remember, the one you have, saying, Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, that Now I can speak English. I tell you, my heart just opened up. And I'm so touched. So I think SOUL's, uh, SOUL's program, SOUL's 24-7 program of teaching English will be very useful for them after they learn the so-called the English in the, in the public school. They can come to SOUL 24, then they will really be good. Yeah, so you can have an amazing idea, you can have an amazing solution, you can actually have a great product, but without the right funding, without the right marketing, without the right support, the product will, will forever remain a secret, forever remain a mystery. Thanks to him, thanks to the Better Nation Foundation, thanks to the Bajaya Cast Foundation and the Bajaya Group, because we also work with different parts of the group. We have truly been able to bring our product, to bring our service, and serve the entire country. Not my kitchen, teacher. Not my kitchen. My boss kitchen. I'm just working there, but she has her own kitchen. And it's it's an extremely um, um, empowering and an inspiring way to truly bring uh, services, to bring to bring solutions to the communities and this is something that makes us very passionate makes us believe that you know finally we have found someone who is willing to, to, to stand by us uh, in a very big way it's not just okay yes he supports us the entire Vajaya group you know the different divisions even the senior managers in all these departments the senior leaders they've been fantastic you know in truly wanting to make a change and to me this is a great way forward where these, these three sectors have to work together 
to implement solutions for the 21st century. We cannot operate in silos anymore because all of us have very great input into the solutions. You know, I'm personally very happy with what SOS 24 7 has achieved. And I think over the longer term, or as soon as it's uh, possible, we should bring SOS 24 7 to everywhere in the world. For example, we can bring it to Asian countries, we can bring it to Indonesia, teach more Indonesian to speak English, bring it to Vietnam, teach more Vietnamese to speak English, bring it to Cambodia, to uh, you know, Laos, uh, many other countries. And of course, we can also bring it to European countries. We can bring it to the poorer European countries, like Bosnia, Serbia, Croatia, and even to Italy, to Spain. Even my personal experience that many Spanish and Italian, Italian that I have met can't speak English. And I'm sure a lot would like to have this because some of the country's economy not doing well. They would like to have free English education. And so 24 can be done if we can get sponsors to assist us. We can bring this program there and help. So help more people in the world to speak English so that, like I said earlier, if more people can communicate in one language, there will be, be better peace and harmony in the world. And it's good for the world.